Well, I'm Digital Projects Director at the GLA. Um, one of the responsibilities is, oh, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me properly at the back? Okay. Um, uh, part of my portfolio that I have in City Hall is the London Data Store. So I thought I'd just uh, start by saying that it's not about data, actually, because it's about organisational change. So I just wanted to share with you the experience from a public official's point of view about the challenges of opening up data generally. So we started scoping the London Data Store in October 2009, and the, um, actually I'm going to stand up. Um, and our initial target was to open up a little bit of these guys sit down. <laughs> Okay, so our initial target was to release the data that we had in the City Hall first uh, and then to encourage the functional bodies that sit underneath uh, the GLA uh, to, to go next. And uh, th those functional bodies are, of course, the uh, Transport for London, the Met Police, uh, El FIFA, and the London Development Agency. So we launched our data sets on the 5th of January with 50 data sets and a target to get a further 200 out by the end of January. And thanks to the work of uh, our, tech, our tech group and of our data management group, we managed to actually get those 200 sets out. But that was really only the start of the journey. And I think it's important when you're looking at the London Data Store to kind of just, uh, maybe I'll share with you the, the model that we have there. Because from the very beginning, uh, we, we took a decision not to build anything, not to look at the technical solutions, until we went out and asked people what do they actually want. So we put out an open call on Twitter and Eventbrite to software developers in London and said, we want to release London's data, will you come and help us? And we had a fantastic response to that call. We had 60 developers who came to City Hall uh, for a workshop, <clears throat> three hour workshop, absolutely fantastic. And we just said to them, how should we go about this? What should we do? What shouldn't we do? Um, and they gave us a very clear steer, which really formed the basis of our thinking around data store. One was not to get into an argument about formats, because we'd never get anything started. Uh, as long as it wasn't PDF, get it out there, and if there were problems with the format, the developers would help us fix that. So that was incredibly useful. Um, and it just meant we didn't get bogged down in saying it has to be linked data, it has to be this kind of, it's just let's get it out there, let's get it out there. And that was really important steer. And the second thing the developers said, which was quite interesting, because many of them had been knocking on the door of government for many, many years, and Tom Newsmore was here to test it up. Um, I said to them, I'm going to need your help, guys. And they went, no, you're going to have to get this for us. We want transport and we want crime. They were the main, the main things. Um, and really, I think it's quite difficult for people who are on the outside, like developers, trying to engage with government because we're different people. You know, it's kind of like engineers and poets, right? Um, so, so I felt very much tasked from the outside of delivering for the developer community. Um, so one of the very important things we did was then set up a, a Twitter account, London Data Store Twitter account, uh, and I had my own account, obviously. And because we had raised expectations very high, but the public sector works very slowly, um, I wanted to surface what I was doing because, you know, you're setting up meetings, it takes time for meetings to happen, there's lots of discussion, and how are you going to surface what you're doing as a public official unless you're communicating and engaging? So any time I went to a meeting in Transport for London or I went to the Home Office or I went to the Met, I would tweet out and say, I'm doing this to talk about data. So at least people knew I was on the agenda, even if they didn't see data sets coming quickly, because believe you me, they don't come quickly in the public sector. Um, <coughs> so that's, that's a key thing, I think, is that the model of the data store is a constant iteration and discussion. So for example, anytime we you know, upload a data set, Gareth will tweet out, we've uploaded this. Anytime somebody does something interesting with that data, we ask them to let us know. We then go visit the, whatever they've done, built a web, web application or a visualization, and we take a screenshot, we put it up in our inspirational uses, and then we tweet out, look what so-and-so has done with our data. And that's quite nice, and often developers will say, I've done something you haven't noticed, can you put it into the inspirational uses? So it's a constant kind of iterative process. Um, so, that, so that's important, that it's, I feel, I've said this before, that the data store has been built in a collaborative way, so it's equally mine as it is, you know, all of my colleagues in the GLA, but also all the developers outside who work with us. Um, and from the beginning, there's been a core group of about 10 who have formed a kind of a sort of technical advisory council for me, certainly. So when I go to public agencies, I'm not a technical expert. So if somebody says to me, we can't do that, it's not technically possible, I could fire out an email to these 10 people and say, this is what I'm being told. Is this true? And they would, of course, invariably come back with saying, no, it's not true, and here's how you do it. So that was fantastically useful, and those 10 have now been appointed onto the Mayor's Digital Advisory Board to kind of horizon scan and to input on future developments for London. So we've come a huge way, I think. Organisations like TfL, for example, quite resistant uh, in the very beginning. 
and we've come a tremendous journey with them. You know, a lot of conflict, a lot of you know push and pull. Uh, but we are now very close to having real-time data for Transport for London coming out fairly soon. We did, we got the real-time data out in, can I remember, it was it June? Um, we, we got the feed for TrackerNet, which shows all the departure boards in London. And that was such a phenomenal success. It got so many hits in, in, in very few days. We actually took out the departure boards for London for nine hours, which probably wasn't a great idea. Um, so obviously, you know, though my concern was TfL would say, well, we're not going to do it anymore. But in actual fact, what they said was, we need to do this in a robust way. So we just need to find a technical solution that can manage that amount of hits and not fall over. So that's the process we're in now. It's moving slowly, but it's getting there. So I would hope to be able to make an announcement on the return of real-time data pretty soon. Um, we're coming into some interesting areas now though, uh, Oyster for example, an interesting area, lots of people want to get Oyster data, lots of concerns in TfL already that, that Londoners are already concerned, for example, that, that TfL mine the data and I can tell you they don't, they erase it every six weeks and that may be hard to believe but that's actually true. Um, but you have an interesting situation coming up now with a game called Chromaroma, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Toby Barnes and Chris Torb's game. But essentially, if you have a mobile, you know, a pay-as-you-go top of the Oyster card, you can give Chrome Aroma your login details, and they can model your travel journey. And you can play games. You can capture stations, you can win points, you can play with your friends. Fantastic. TfL are really stressed out about this, because they're saying, we don't want people giving out their username and password. Okay? Well, there's two ways of looking at that, isn't it? Should the state have the right to stop me or me if I decide I want to participate in a game? You know, am I comfortable with the games company knowing my travel journeys, where I am? Yeah, I'm pretty relaxed about that. But as a transport company, TfL are saying, we don't want people to think we're giving out their data. So we're in a very interesting discussion at the moment because Toby and Chris are expanding the game. They're going to go more public. And I'm trying to say to TfL, it doesn't matter what you think. They are going to do this. And imagine if you had a campaign that ran Pan in London saying to people, join Chrome Aroma. They're going to do it. Because I've got an 18 year old son. He's quite happy about giving out his details. If he can play a game and his Oyster card becomes like a memory, a memory stick for a PlayStation. Um, so that's quite an interesting uh, dynamic. But it's, it's kind of saying to government, you don't get to control this space anymore. These people are incredibly clever and they're out there, and you've got to play catch up. So it's, it's very much about data pushing at the boundaries of a command and control model in government, which quite frankly doesn't exist anymore in the way that it did. So another example of that would be around cycle hire. Um, so before the cycle hire scheme launched, I said to TfL, I need to get the data on the sort of bike hire locations and some real-time data. And they said, okay, well, yeah, we'll have a look at that. And then two weeks later, I see this tweet from a, a young developer saying, look at the cycle hire app I've built. I'm thinking, how the hell did he do that? I haven't even got a meeting yet. So it turned out he'd FOI'd the bike locations and he built an app on, on the basis of that. And he put the spreadsheet up for everybody else to use. Uh, and you know, TfL said, oh God, you know, that's wrong because it says 400 locations, there's actually going to only be about 350. And you know, this is what happens when people go building things when we're not ready. It's like, that's not the point. They're gonna do it. We now have six cycle hire apps. Um, and we're waiting to get the real-time data. Currently, it's been scraped off the TfL website. So we have an interesting situation where I have a screenshot of a scraped API um, on a state website while I'm waiting for the actual <laughs> legitimate one to come through. So that's just another example, I think, of how the state is really struggling to keep up with you guys. A lot of you, I'm sure, are developers. Um, because you're really, you know, you're leading the way. And it's a fantastic opportunity for the public sector to leverage innovation in. And I certainly think that's been my experience through engaging with the open data community, that I've leveraged in a you know, huge intellectual brain power into the public sector at no cost to the generosity of the developers. Um, and it's a sort of reciprocal model because they're helping me, but also through my work, I'm releasing data sets that's helping them to build businesses in some way. And how long that relationship will be like that at no cost at a reciprocal level, I don't know. But at the moment, it's been an absolutely fantastic thing uh, for us to experience. So I'm gonna stop there. I've got one minute and maybe if anybody has any questions I'm happy to answer.